Now it is asked in gate 2007, they are asking about what is the waiting time of process P2 using SRTF. So even though they are asking for only one process, let's do for all the, all the process. So first thing is, uh, you know that arrival time has to start from 0, fine. And then uh, only, only one process available as of now, so which is uh, P1, fine. Now don't, don't try to you know, stop process P1 for every one unit. See when the next process is going to be available. So if you start P1 at 0, the next process is going to be available at 15. Therefore, it is better that you run till 15. Then only you check that, you know, whether the next one is having remaining shortest bus time or not. So don't stop on waiting for 0, 1 and then 2, 1, 3 like that. Here, you need not wait for that because it is always better that you see when the next process is going to arrive. Next process is going to arrive at 15. Therefore, you run it till 15 and then maybe you can stop and check, right? So next process is arriving at 15. Now by that time I have executed this for 15 units. Therefore, what is the remaining time for P1? 5. And now compare it. Now I have two process available. One is P1, other is P2. And then both the uh, bus times required are one is 5 and other is 25. Therefore, we are going to continue with P1. P1, it requires 5 more. Therefore, 20. And P1 is over now. Right? Now what is the time? 20. And now P1 is over. So only one more process is available, isn't it? By the time 20, only these two processes are available. One is finished. Therefore, we have to you know, schedule the next one because we have only one, one available now, right? Now it is going to be P2. So watch it. So P2 is going to start at 20. Then how long should I run it till the next one becomes available, right? So when, when is the next one available? At 30. So till 30 you run it. Therefore, how much time did you run P2 for 10 units, 20 to 30, right? So you decrement it by 10, which is nothing but 15 here, right? And now you check. Now I have P1 and P2, P3, all are available. But P1 is already finished. Therefore, I have choice between these two, P2 and P3. So P2 is saying that it has 15 units of time remaining. And P3 is saying that it has 10 units of time. Therefore, you better run P P3, right? Now if I run P3, then what happens is, P3. Hmm. P3 requires only 10 units of time. The next one is arriving at 45. Therefore, if I run till 45, it is going to be 15 units of time. But then P3 is, uh, you know, P3 requires only 10 units of time. Therefore, I am running till 40. Are you understanding the logic? If the process requires less time, I am just running it to completion. Otherwise, I am just waiting at the arrival time of the next process. Therefore, I can stop there and decide whether the next process is having uh, less, uh, you know, this uh, burst time or not. In this case, the next process after P3 is arriving at 45. But then, I cannot run P3 for 45, you know, till 45 because it requires only 10. If I go for, you know, 45, then I might have to wait for 5. Therefore, I will be running till 40. Uh, and now I decide which one to schedule. Now, what are the various processes available? Only three. P1, P2 and P3, they have arrived below 40. They have arrival times below 40. And already P1 is over and now P3 is over. So, only one thing I have is, out of no choice, I have to run P2, isn't it? Therefore, I am going to run P2 only. Fine. How long are you going to run P2? P2 requires 15 units of burst time, right? And now, P2 requires 15 units of burst time, but then the next one is going to be available at 45. Therefore, I am going to run it till 45, which means 5 units. Therefore, the remaining time for P2 is 10. And now I stop and compare. So, I have uh, by this time all are available. P1 is over, P3 is over. Now, only these two are remaining. And now, which one should I choose? P2 itself. Therefore, I will continue using running P2. Right, if I run P2 and how much time is remaining for that 10, therefore 55. So 55 is the completion time for P2, right? And what about next one? P3. P, 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 P4, right? That is the only remaining, therefore P4. How much time does it need? 15. So if I go with 15, it is going to be 70. Got it? So that is how, uh, you know, we could finish it off. Uh, so one thing you should observe here is, Whenever you choose a one, choose one process to run it, either you go till the completion or you stop at the arrival time of the next process. And at that point, you can st stop and see whether the next process requires, 
you know whether next process is having less uh, bt that burst time in case if it is having less bt schedule it otherwise continue with the present process and again run it till the arrival time of the next process so don't stop it for every one unit otherwise it is going to become very big got it just be careful there fine that is all you know it, it should be intuitive for you now let's see the completion time of all the process even though they are asking for only p2 you know you can only write for p2 and then you can find it out but uh, okay i'm i want to do everything or you can just choose it like p2 let's solve it p2 first now p2's completion time is 55 right and therefore what is the turnaround time of p2 turnaround time of p2 is completion time minus arrival time which is nothing but 40 right and what is the waiting time then waiting time is turnaround time minus burst time turnaround time is 40 and the burst time is 25 therefore waiting time is 15 this is the answer got it or if you want to fill it up you can fill it up that is up to you anyway just remember that whenever we have a long gap between the arrival times don't stop the process for every unit just stop the process whenever the next process has occurred i mean arrived then you just see whether what you want to do whether you want to continue with this one or change it right fine so that is how this one could be answered interesting question right